July 1st, 2017 was a big night for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm Kelly Nitro and this is my take of the G1 USA special that aired on Access TV and the Fight Network, ironically enough, up here in Canada. Now, of course, what they named the special is a little different because of the Japanese to English translation that stuff. The actual name on Wikipedia is the G1 special in USA. However, the first night went on July 1st, which ironically was Canada Day. That's why I'm rocking the Captain Connect Club shirt. And this is just my first thoughts, my first impressions of the card and the show tonight. The show was a long one. It uh, ran, I think, for about close to the four hour mark on the Fight Network and I didn't even know the Fight Network was doing it live. I found out just scrolling through my cable box on a whim before uh, the events tonight. I thought that this was going to be something that uh, potentially people would have to go to, shall we say, somewhat less than legal means to take a look at. Um, but it was a good deal for them. Uh, I'm, very interesting little tidbit to start is that during the commercial breaks of the G1, uh, Fight Network was running ads for tomorrow night's Slammiversary pay-per-view, uh, which of course is Impact Wrestling is owned by uh, Anthem, which is the parent company of the Fight Network, I guess. I'm so used to calling it Impact, I guess now it's GFW or it will be after tomorrow night. So it's it was very interesting because a few years ago when they brought the Wrestle Kingdom pay-per-view over, I think it was Global Force Wrestling that spearheaded that, and um, they brought over the Wrestle Kingdom pay-per-view, which was a lot of the mainstream wrestling fans here in, the st in North America and the States and that stuff. That was their first real look at people like Shinsuke Nakamura, and Kenny Omega and the current crop of uh, New Japan stars. At least I know it was my first real look to see what New Japan had. I knew they had AJ Styles at the time, but I had no idea, uh, you know, of Nakamura, how good he was, and this new character that he kind of evolved from from the from the days of the mid 2000s and that stuff. And of course, uh, Ishii. Naito, guys like that. So it was a cool deal back then. And so I thought it was just, I found it kind of interesting. The next thing, I'm just going to group this all in because it's an all in one kind of topic, was the multi man matches. And for a show that was kind of, I don't want to say a premiere, but kind of a special on Access TV in the States, Fight Network up here in Canada, kind of exposing your product to the North American wrestling public and the English-speaking public, well, if you will. Um, I had no problem with there being three multi-man matches on that card. Uh, it's You try to get everybody in as much as you can. It's like the WrestleMania thing where, okay, we're going to try and book a billion matches for the super card Let's try and get everybody working. And that's, uh, I think, the route that they did for that is that they had to showcase everybody to give a full, I guess, example of what was going on. There were people who shined in these multi man matches tonight, like I know in the first one, uh, Marty, Marty Skrull, uh, Will Ospreay looked really good. I didn't see much of Bad Luck Fale. I would have wanted to see a little bit more from him in that uh, 10 man. Uh, the Briscoes are always fun to see, but they kind of, I don't want to say they did much, but I don't know. I'll have to rewatch it and see again exactly the, the, how much time they did spend in there. But it almost was like it was, they were on the apron and really didn't do too, too much. Um, same with Liger, and I think that might have to do with maybe age and maybe him just kind of clearing away and let the, let the, uh, uh, the tag team of the, uh, CMLL guys that he had tagging with him kind of showcased themselves more because at 50 some years old Liger I think we know what he can accomplish right and the third multi-man tag was just trying to push over for the second part of this G1 tournament the Tanahashi Billy Gunn IC title feud and I think it did a good job in that so 
I have no problem with the multi-man matches or the, the amount of them on this card. I thought they were great. I thought they were timed out actually really good. And uh, I think they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. Now the tournament for the new US Heavyweight Champion for the IWGP. Uh, the belt looks amazing. It looks really good. And uh, man, we're down to four now after tonight. Uh, I thought match of the night definitely has to go to Omega and Elgin. I thought they put on an amazing display. Of honorable mention though, to Juice Robinson and Zack Sabre Jr. Because that match there was everybody's pick a match of the night there until about the end of the card. And um, Juice has come a long way. He's done a really good job since leaving NXT and just kind of getting really embroiled in that whole uh, system that New Japan's got. And I've, I think he's really grown as a performer back then. The juice is loose in New Japan and uh, man, it's, it's fun to see. Really fun to see. Anyway, out of the four left, if I had to pick a guy to win it all out of the four, I think maybe Omega. I think that this might be the belt that they give Omega for a bit and he can do a lot with this brand new belt and kind of you know maybe make it to the point where like Nakamura had with the Intercontinental belt a couple of years ago where almost the Intercontinental belt seems like it means more than the world belt I think Omega could make this US belt make it and the matches and that stuff make it mean more than the IWGP World Heavyweight title belt so just Picking out of the four that's left, I think Kenny Omega's got the inside track. Also, the IWGP tag titles were on the line with War Machine versus Gorilla's Destiny, and that match was the first match back from their little halftime break. New Japan takes halftime breaks with their shows, kind of giving it that legit sports feel where, okay, we had a few preliminary bouts, now you can get up and stretch your legs for about 15, 20 minutes, and then, uh, you know, visit the merch table, get what you need to and then come back and check out the rest of the action. It was a car wreck this match and I love it. It was a very awesome old school, felt like um, watching, gosh, like an ECW tag match almost back in the day. Except uh, I don't think there was a lot of blood or anything like that, but it was, it, it, it felt like watching, you know, the Gangstas versus the Dudleys or something like that was very cool great match uh, if you get a chance to check it out check it out new IWGP tag champions off that which is Hanson and Roe War Machine and this is actually one of the first times I've got a chance to sit down and watch War, Mach War Machine work as a tag team those guys are big and hairy and scary they can give the offers of pain a good run for their money I think big dudes and of course the main event with Cody Rhodes and uh, Kazuchika Okada for the IWGP World Heavyweight title was really good. It was, a lot of sites are saying that it was Cody Rhodes' best match ever that he's ever had. I have to tend to agree. Uh, I have not seen the match that he had with Christopher Daniels, but apparently that match was really good as well. Uh, this match tonight though was thoroughly entertaining and if you haven't seen it yet uh, suss it out go check it out and uh, give me your response or your thought pattern on it I thought it told an amazing story from front to back uh, it wasn't match of the night like I said I'll still give that to Omega and Elgin I thought that that match was really good really hard hitting and uh, you know I won't even give this match uh, second place because I think Zack Sabre Jr. and Juice Robinson had themselves a really good match that was match of the night in the running up until Omega and Elgin. So this match slots in at third, uh, the third best match of the card for me, the main event. Uh, the crowd really was, it was interesting how they sided with Okada and not so much Cody. I think that might be just, you know, because it, Cody's still got this or has done such a great job of establishing himself as a heel first of all and second I think he's still got the WWE kind of mystique around him a little bit and the uh, strong style fans I don't think appreciate or like that too much I kind of get the feeling you know so it 
it seems to me that Cody is evolving quite a bit and uh, there was a few tweets online of people that are like, well, I don't understand his character, blah, 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 right now. His character right now is that of the old school arrogant wrestling heel from the 1980s. The guy who's been around from territory to territory, who thinks he's done and seen it all, and he's the, you know, the cock of the walk, and he'll, he can beat anybody and that stuff. It's the same kind of, kind of deal that, like, the Midnight Express had in Crockett's NWA. Or, uh, to name an example from WWF, who would it be a good one? Maybe a guy like a Ken Patera, or a, um, uh, like a ravishing Rick Rude almost. You know, without the, 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 the super overbearing, you know, just ar arrogance that Rude had, but Cody's got a little bit of it. I think that that's kind of the route that Cody's going with this character right now, the American Nightmare and it works really well on the New Japan scale. Um, the match they had tonight, like I said, was very, it, it, it was a very entertaining world title fight. Um, the storyline heats up with Omega and Rhodes and that's why, that's another reason why I think Omega will get this US title so that immediately it would be a US title program between Omega and Rhodes and um, it will maybe for the leadership of the Bullet Club maybe one of them turns face um, I can't see Cody maybe turning face so I think it would be Omega and the Young Bucks maybe this is where we finally get the split from the Bullet Club of the Elite and the Elite goes on and, and becomes their own face faction you know like uh, what chaos used to be when Nakamura was back in New Japan and that stuff so it was all right it was a, a very entertaining special and um, oh one more thing the commentary now the commentary tonight was done by JR Jim Ross and Josh Barnett that's Axis TV's announced team for New Japan now the New Japan World announced team, of course, is Kevin Kelly and Don Callis. Because this was on Axis TV, naturally, and Axis TV uh, essentially brokered the deal to broadcast both the shows. Uh, the one that ran tonight and the one that will be taped tomorrow to run next Friday. Um, I can see why that they wanted their own announced team in there because it's Access TV, it's on their network, so of course they're going to want their guys calling it. And I think that's all that is. Um, I know a lot of people were saying that, well, JR isn't as infused with the product, he sounds wore out and everything like that. Well, maybe so, because JR has called a lot of matches in his day, and the guy could be a little bit wore out at this point in his career. Uh, I thought that they were entertaining. I thought JR did a great job of uh, telling the story and selling the moves and selling what the guys were doing. Uh, Barnett was a little hit and miss, but I still I still like Barnett as a color commentator just when it comes down to just mat wrestling and submission skills and stuff like that. Talking about it and trying to make it more of a layman's uh, term monology about that. I thought the card was alright. If you haven't seen it, Go check it out. Uh, look in your local listings and ask them. I think it's up on NGPW World as well, too. So maybe just go and check that out that way. Um, I know definitely a, J a Japanese language version of the card is up there. Uh, maybe check and see if like an English version with either JR and Josh Barnett is up there. Uh, I'm unaware if... Don Callis and Kevin Kelly did their commentary over top, or will be doing their commentary over top of this as well, too. Um, I won't be holding my breath for that, but hey, it, for introducing this product on a national North American scale on a network that a lot of people now get in the States, Access TV is pretty much everywhere with the exception of a few markets. Um, I know that Access TV, with the, uh, when it was HDNet, was available up here in Canada. It's not now. Uh, so Fight Network picked it up. 
it did the job. It was all right. It made me uh, very interested to see what happens on Friday when they do the tape delay. And I'm not going to read spoilers or anything like that. And that will be when the next Nitro's take will be. Will be next Friday with New Japan Pro Wrestling, I should say, will be next Friday. Because the next Nitro's take this is a big weekend for uh, wrestling if your initials of your company are not WWE because we have the Impact Wrestling Sam Slammiversary. Uh, I guess you should call it the Global Force Wrestling now, Slammiversary, uh, because TNA, Impact Wrestling, the name TNA gonna be no more after tomorrow night, so it'll be Global Force Wrestling. But anyway, that's tomorrow night. I'm tired, it's been Canada Day, it's been a lot of fun. I'm Kellen Nitro, thanks for watching. Click and click the uh, like and subscribe button if you like what I've had to say, or if you disagree with it and think I'm a complete moron, but you wanna argue and you like the gimmick table stuff anyway. Take it easy guys, we'll talk to you soon.